welcome to another episode here on A New Life in France. Thank you so much for the feedback from the changes we made. We're still getting there, still a few more changes to be done in one or two of the programs and we're just working on that as we go along. So we're always learning, always trying to deliver new and different ways. But what we're going to look at this week is we're following on from where we were looking about where to find a property. And really when we were talking about where, that was the internet, agents, notaires, etc. And really giving you that kind of insight. What we're going to look at today is the types of property that France can offer. You have to remember with France, and lots of people talk about this as one of the real big benefits about France, there are so many different geographical locations and also the geology of France. And what I mean by that is you can have coast, you can have mountain, you can have pastures, you can have cities, you can have towns. There are so many different varieties of place that you can find in France. France. So you can go to northern France where you go up onto that border with Belgium then coming around to Germany and then around to to Switzerland and then a little bit of Italy and then of course then you come back around to Spain as well that's there. So when you look at this the richness of France actually means there are so many different places and so many different property types and you really need to think about that and understand that as well. So let's have a run through some of the property types and when we talk about the property types if you were French and a lot of the French today will be buying modern French houses and you start to see those popping out a lot around the place. When you look at those they're very energy efficient and it probably is other places around the world now where you see that building development. Lots of houses look very similar, very similar style to them. They sort of put together more in that kind of, probably from a UK or a US perspective, we sort of understand that's kind of suburbia sprawl that's there. But also what France has from that aspect it is also looking at that green credentials. So new houses do have a much higher green credentials, energy efficiency is far, far higher. But what you also have in France is everything else. And when I talk about everything else, you know, key things in French history, France as a country has been around for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And with that, you will see those changes in terms of the building types that are here. But what I see personally is a lot of change around the 13th century. So I'm not going to give you a big history lesson, but you see a lot of things in the 13th century. You see a lot of churches, you see a lot of chateaus, and they are seen as the 13th century. There's a lot of that around. And so what you have from those times is you then have a chateau or a castle and you ha then have the town surrounds and everything gets built up around that. So when you look at those kind of things, you can see bits of history that have actually happened in France. You then also see, you also see that kind of history around the 1900s as well. Either side of 1900, you see that change as well. Probably looking sort of 1873 to about 1890, again, you see that change. And then you see that change we can probably go into about 1901 1902 so you see how things have changed this isn't uncommon that you see that agriculture has always been a big thing now in France that really is still a big thing and again agriculture dictates what happens so you look at how towns are built you look at the surrounds around those as well you look where people work and where they live and all of that dictates the kind of housing stock that is there from a historical point of view but also if you've come much more modern day, more and more people want to move into towns, into cities, where there are many more attractions, more things to go, more places to eat, more different places to shop at. And so you see that change. And probably for me, moving from the UK to France, I probably see the change probably sort of 20, 30 years ago in the UK, when more and more people are moving into the towns and coming out of the countryside. So what does that actually mean for housing stock and the type of houses that you can buy? So let's look at mountainous areas. So within those mountainous areas, you of course have ski resorts. That is a completely different ball game. So you will have all of those chalets, you will have apartments, but they are built with a purpose. Come slightly further down the mountain or look to places without ski resorts then you will have traditional properties. You will have traditional farming, agricultural type properties. And they will be there with a very stereotypical steep 
pitched roof again for the snow to fall off. You have those lovely meadows and beautiful views. So you will have those as well. And again, as you come slightly down, probably towards the snow line and be below, when you come down to pasture land, you still have those agricultural properties then you start to see smaller villages popping up. And again, there's a history behind those, but you have those smaller villages. So from a mountain perspective, and again, if you look at the different mountain ranges in France, everyone's very used to those that are bordering Switzerland and then also to the Pyrenees, but also don't forget the massive Centrale and around the Mont d'Or area as well, not far from clermont Franc. So you have those as classic mountain areas and look at those in terms of what you're looking for. Now, people who are looking for ski chalets are probably looking for a second home. You might be looking for part ownership, etc. But they are there. Now, my advice probably is there are agents that specialise in those, and those are probably the agents to to talk to or to look at or go and get a feel for that. But you will get those type of properties. Then outside of the ski type properties, then lots of other agents will offer you different properties that are on the foothills of those mountains. Now for me, I love the Pyrenees and I think on that French side you get some beautiful places as well. Even when you're looking down to that Spanish border, lots of people are very familiar with Lords and a lot of pilgrims go from there and of course there's lots of history. But anywhere across that stretch really you can go from, say you go from Po, or you can go across to from Baritz as well and then you can go all the way across to, to the Mediterranean. So anything across there has such a rich variety. So we're talking about those kind of houses. So then let's look at rural properties. Rural properties, again, have grown up through agriculture and it doesn't really matter where you are in France, those kind of rural properties will probably be a house. Now that house might well have a barn attached to it and that is nothing unusual. What you'll also have within that house then, you've probably got a couple of rooms downstairs and then you've probably got some kind of hayloft above and then the barn itself is probably soil and it probably has some differences there for the animals. So you'll have some areas for the cattle coming in or for the sheep. And again, this is going back in historical times. You will also then have huge barn doors as well. So it's not uncommon to see those converted. Now you have a choice when you're looking to buy that type of property. Do you go for something you're going to convert or do you go for something that's already been converted? When you look at those again, typically you won't just have one house just there. If you're going to have a farmhouse, then that's slightly different. It is bigger and it will have more barns around it. But if we look at a very rural village setting of which there are thousands across France, you will have a number of houses, you will have a number of conversions, you'll have a number of barns. You'll probably find that probably only half of the properties are actually occupied. Now that can be to do with when somebody has died, it gets passed down and then it gets passed down again. And of course you probably had bigger families in those days. Sometimes you just can't track the people down. You just just can't get those properties to be able to to buy and from that perspective so you need to think about that but when you look at those small hamlets as I said there are thousands across France that are offer you but most of them will be there to be converted or will have been converted if they've been converted from sort of those who are not living in France they will have probably been converted into nice house probably biggish areas you probably have a sheet on the side that you probably converted a barn to and it will have some land around it as well so also think about that in terms of what you're looking at. Those are not uncommon and of course a lot of people who are moving to France from overseas will be looking at those types of properties. Lots of people will look for the renovations and they're great there's the property let's do the renovations and others will just look for something that's been renovated and you look if you look at how housing stock has changed over the last 30 years with the influx of those people from abroad there is a lot more in the way of converted rural properties that are available for sale as a house or as a house with a business or just as a business and there are lots of those that are there well we then probably come into the towns, and let's look at towns in terms of size. A town, a town might actually have two or three hundred people. A town might have two or three thousand people. It might even go up maybe to sort of 10, 15, 20,000. And then we we'll probably look at a city. If you look at a smaller town in terms of its stock, it will have a mix of modern and it will have a mix of old properties. And again, dependent where it is in France, you will start to see some of these townhouses. Now these townhouses could be hundreds of years 
or they might be a hundred years old. But a townhouse typically is going to have that basement. So that carve is then going to have a ground floor where you enter into and then you come to your first, your second, your third floor. And of course, in terms of interpretation of language, I know that a ground floor or a first floor is very different if you're talking UK or you're talking US. But we'll talk about a ground floor is where you walk in off the street. Let's call it from that size. But many of these town properties will have that basement or a carve. Carve, basement, same thing. Now, of course, a carve from years gone by would have been where you kept all of your food stuff, but predominantly you will have kept your wine really nice and cool in a shaded area. So you will typically have those, and when you have those, you might have something that's two, three, four, five stories high, maybe even a little bit more in the bigger towns. Again, a townhouse from that side is not untypical. But what you also find is you can look at a street, and you will look in probably a little bit of history to something, 100, 200, 300 years old. You look at all of the properties together, they're probably all slightly different. They probably go out slightly differently at the back, they might taper in, they might have a different setup as you come in. They will not be the same, and that's just one of the charms of France. No one house really is the same unless you look at very much as a modern day house. Even apartments are very different unless it is a purpose-built apartment block. So when we're looking typically what people will be buying, a townhouse is definitely not uncommon. Now a townhouse you might have to buy to do some renovation, some you have to do a full renovation, others you will just move straight into that house. We've already featured a number of townhouses on this particular channel. I like a townhouse because normally a townhouse will have more than enough accommodation for what you need. So you then might actually think about friends and family coming over. You might also think it's a little business opportunities as well. Don't get carried away with a, a Jeep business. Don't get carried away with a bed and breakfast. You're going to make thousands of pounds done right. You're going to make a business, but also there's a lot of competition around that. So when we look at a townhouse, typically the townhouse is going to have what you want. A number of these houses will have an ensuite bathroom as well for probably the main bedroom, but most bedrooms are light, they're big, they're airy as well, and that's what you get with a townhouse. Also have to remember, with a townhouse, you will end up with less than you would if you were in a rural property where you're likely to have some additional land. But we do find most of the times of the townhouse it will have a really nice garden. Usually quite a long garden is quite common, unless it's quite a wide property, then it is obviously wider. And what you need to be looking at then is what kind of views you get, what kind of noise you get into as well. The French themselves, they're, they're not adverse to noise, and obviously windows help with that. But for a lot of French people living in French houses, the heart of the home is in the kitchen and everything happens in the house. And yes, it's nice to have those gardens to be able to do things with. What you will see, particularly with modern French houses, you will see quite big gardens, but a lot of the time they're just laid to lawn and a few trees. Now, if you're coming from the UK, a lot of people really love their gardening. They invest a lot of time and flowers and trees and shrubs and really building up, which is great. And of course, the climate in some ways will allow you to do that. Otherwise, it won't. Depends where you are in France. But also, again, just think when you're looking at a property as well, particularly if it is a French-owned property, look at the difference and maybe the stamp you put on it. But townhouses are really, really nice and they have a lot going for them. When you look at a townhouse in a city, then that's probably not different to other countries. A lot of townhouses are now being turned into apartments, and that's not uncommon. But if you look at a townhouse in a big city, it will cost you money to be able to buy that property, but it will normally have a really nice garden to it, probably a garden at the front, a garden at the back, it's slightly set back. It's not uncommon in the big cities. So for me, townhouses are great because also you are normally in a town by definition. And with the town, you will be able to walk to a number of things. So you'll be able to walk to restaurants and shops and everything that goes on with that. And there's normally a really good buzz within a town and you get that. So when you move up to a city, so cities will be some townhouses on the outskirts of a city, then you're going to have that kind of suburbia feel to it. You'll still get some kind of properties that are there, but a lot of people will buy in a city for an apartment. And that's not uncommon from people moving to France from the US, from the UK, from other parts of Europe or other parts of the world. They will probably look for an apartment and you'll see those hotspots. And we'll talk about certain hotspots in our next episode. But also apartments, again, think about how the apartments are put together. They modern apartments. It's an older building that's been converted, but converted quite recently, etc. You've got all these things to think about. 
but also again then think about things that might be in there about additional taxes or there might be some communal costs that have to go in there and again that is not unusual to look at and those kind of things anywhere around the world those thoughts are there but you do get those what you also get get in france as well because of the space you will have the ability to look at small holdings and small holdings as well that you might be looking at something that's maybe five hectares, 10 hectares, maybe stretch to maybe 30 hectares, and then you start to look properly at then farms. So to be able to have an agricultural type property in France, very easily done, and you can have a look at those anywhere across France. Again, there are parts of France that are very agribusiness. It's flat, good climates, good growing conditions. A lot of the land has been bought up and it really is a proper agricultural business. When you look outside, you look maybe to more areas that are a little bit more undulating, then you start to get more of those smaller holdings, more of those farms that are available and that they are there to be able to done. Now, when you look at farms or horticulture or agriculture or equine, can look at specialists in terms of that because you will have a need and you will probably have questions that they can answer that another agent may not be able to answer but you need to really understand all the different nuances if you're going to come to look at an agricultural business an equine business all the kind of things you need to put together with that and also if you're buying a business as well some of the things you need to think about in terms of that but for me there is lots of agricultural opportunities lots of small holding opportunities and you see so many horses around france because a lot of people have got a little bit of land they'll have a horse or a couple of horses a horse a donkey chickens etc you can live that kind of idyllic life if you want that but again think about all those different things so there are lots of those opportunities around there as well you can then also look to the sea, and there's a lot of sea in France. You've obviously got the English Channel, you've got the Atlantic, you've got the Mediterranean. You have those that are the big attractions and the draws to people. If you're actually over the English Channel, probably in Normandy or Brittany, you still have that, that draw. And again, you have to think about those kind of houses that are probably on a coastal town or a coastal village. When you come down the western side, it's a little bit more varied in terms of that, but you will get that mix of the Atlantic weather coming in, which sometimes will bring in beautiful sunshine, will sometimes bring in a little bit of rain and a little bit of wind as well. But there are some beautiful towns and beautiful cities. And again, a lot of people have heard of La Rochelle, Ile de Ré, which is their beautiful, lovely setting. It's just very, very tranquil. But you don't need to go too far up and down the coast or just come inland a little bit to still be able to appreciate that kind of environment, but actually, again, with a different price tag that's to do with that. So when you look at those kind of coastal properties, think about what you're looking for. Do you want to be able to see the sea or do you want to be able to access the sea really quickly, probably just by walking to the sea or other areas in terms of that? So think about that. And particularly when you get down much closer down to the Spanish border, again, on that western coast, there are some beautiful properties, some really good cost effective properties as well. There's some good surfing when you get down to those areas. But do then just think about those kind of properties and you will get more coastal properties you'll start to see one or two chalets that are available as well they might be great maybe if they're a couple for a permanent home or you might actually be using those as a second home and then when we swing around coastally of course down to the south of France and if you take it really from that whole lovely area all going from the Spanish coast all the way across to the Italian coast I mean that is stunning and of course prices vary there but they are always that a little bit more expensive you've got the climate you've got the sea you've got the weather you've got all of these differences that come in from there but there will be little pockets that you can find things and again you can actually in the bigger towns and the bigger cities that are there you'll be able to find apartments that overlook the harbors have lovely beach views yes you pay the price for those but they are there of course you've got Caen, you've got Nice, you've got Monte uh, Carlo in terms of Monaco as well along that coastline. Of course, it's that little bit more expensive along there, but do think about that. So when you look at France, France has so many different property types to offer you. And particularly if they're not that modern, then every single one will be that little bit different. And that's why sometimes it's really hard to put a price on something because the price really is what somebody is prepared to pay. And sometimes people will drop a price, sometimes they'll put the price up a little bit or whatever, you play the market slightly, but it's also what that person wants. So the same from a buyer or a seller, if you're selling think about what the type of person is looking to 
buy that property and if you're a buyer be really really clear what you are looking for because there are so many properties and I think again when we look in a further episode we're going to start to break down some of the areas of France traditionally those people moving to France from the UK America or other places you know the expat community moving in will probably be on that western coast and then down to the south of France and then slightly inland and then a few in Paris and a few in, in Lyon and other big cities but also there's lots of forgotten areas as well if you go to Annecy which is on that Swiss border as well that's lovely through there you come up to the Alsace again that's really different a little bit more mountainous and again you can access into Germany into Austria and you could also go into Luxembourg etc you've got that area through there a lot of people forget that particular area but there are lots of areas and we're going to talk about those specifically in many episodes coming up I want to really want to bring with you some of the areas of France what the great things are now for me we're just coming into the winter time we'll soon be into the Christmas markets when you look at that Alsace area when you look at that sort of German French border and up through there it really is renowned for those Christmas markets for lots of reasons and of course there are other Christmas markets around but I'm just giving you that as an example so I want to give you that flavor so again when you're just looking at your properties you could have properties in the mountains you could have properties in the hills you could have rural properties you could have rural properties on their own you could have rural properties in a small hamlet you could live in a town you can live in a city some of those are big some of those are small you could live by the sea the choices are endless and when I spoke last time about your checklist it's so important the checklist then the house can start to match what your checklist is and then you can start to see what that house can do for you and particularly if you want land and agriculture and equine etc etc there's so much there so I really want you to start to think about the types of properties that are available every single one is different and actually you can always find yourself a really character house pretty much at most levels and most budgets for people you can find some really great renovation properties and you seriously can find something sub 20,000 you can find some magnificent properties in that two three four million and you're likely to go in a chateau there's lots of programs about chateaus but in reality how many people are going to buy a chateau it's not a big big market but it's the market that people go oh I love that chateau I think it's great I think it's that perfect that's great and there are lots of chateaus available there are and chateaus come in all sorts of sizes you can have chateaus for two or three hundred thousand which will need loads of work you can actually buy some chateaus that might be five or six hundred thousand don't need much work at all but don't get carried away with chateaus and that's why I haven't really focused on them hugely because the market and you as the viewers watching that are probably not going to be buying one but if you are lots of places you can buy them lots of things you can find out about them but I just want to give you that real nuts and bolts of the stereotypical kind of houses that you can look at for the kind of budget and what you're looking for so I really hope you found that useful today trying to impart that knowledge of everything that I've gained here living in France talking to different people be they French be they English be they American be they Australian Canadian whatever just to give you that kind of knowledge to really help you on that journey each and every Wednesday now I want to be giving you these kind of fact type programs just give you more information to look at then again we've got the French lessons on the Friday which are really popular and you're really enjoying on a Saturday we are going to be giving you more and more properties we're going to want to be giving you three or four properties on a Saturday and just choosing a few properties from around France to go this is this budget or that's that budget we're also going to be bringing you more and more stories as well so we're looking to bring bringing you four programs a week every single week if you haven't subscribed press the subscribe button below really hope you've enjoyed today and also look out for us on our Facebook group as well moving to France go on to there search it join it and we'll let you in go to a new life in France .com where you can find out lots more information on our website and of course you can come to our YouTube channel each and every week